In 2009, researchers used the laws of gravity to predict what our solar system would look like 5 billion years in the future. Since they were using equations that were deterministic, it meant that there is no randomness, no surprises. You input the positions and velocities of all the planets and the sun where they currently are, and you get exactly where they will be at any time in the future. The solar system should work like a clock, ticking away as it has done for billions of years, completely predictable. So predictable that our notion of time itself is based on the movement of these celestial bodies. And sure enough, these equations were predictable. If they put in the exact same starting positions, they get exactly the same results every time they run the simulation. But for this simulation to run, they had to input the distances that all the planets currently are from our sun. For example, they could input the Mercury's 36 million miles from the sun. But that's not exact. It's not like we have a measuring tape that we can go out and measure how close Mercury currently is to the sun. So they said, okay, well, let's say that we don't quite have the distance of Mercury exactly correct. Let's add just 0.38 millimeters to that. So they changed the input by 0.00000001%. And what they found was that they didn't in fact get the same thing. In each simulation they ran, it would be quite different with the planets ending up in totally different places in the solar system. In fact, they ran over 2,500 times and changed the input of Mercury with initial conditions that differed by only 0.38 millimeters in the semi-major axis of Mercury. So all they did was change that one parameter for Mercury by a tiny bit and they found they didn't converge to the same answer, but they were spread out everywhere. In fact, sometimes they would get results that showed the maximum eccentricity of Mercury that was way off the charts. In fact, one of the solutions was so extreme that it predicted that Mercury would induce a transfer of angular momentum from the giant planets that destabilizes all the terrestrial planets 3.34 billion years from now, with possible collisions of Mercury, Mars, or Venus with Earth. So by changing the current position of Mercury by a few millimeters, it changed the predicted outcome of the solar system dramatically. But why? How do such unpredictable results happen from equations that are completely deterministic with no elements of randomness? So we have diverted to Sheridan to increase our time of totality 40 seconds. On August 21st, 2017, I drove to Sheridan, Oregon and saw my first total solar eclipse. It was amazing. Then six years later, on October 14th, 2023, I drove to Holden, Utah to see another solar eclipse. This time it was an annular solar eclipse. Since the moon was further from the Earth at that time, the relative size of the moon was smaller than the sun, so it didn't quite cover it. The sun was still visible as a ring around the moon. Not quite as majestic to see as a total solar eclipse, but it was fun to see circular shadows. Now to see these eclipses, I had to be in the right place at the right time. And the only way I knew where to be is I looked up a map of where I should be. These maps were made by scientists that were using equations to predict where the sun and moon would be at a certain time in the future. In fact, we can predict when and where you can see solar eclipses for hundreds of years into the future. After that, it gets a little fuzzy, but why? We know Newton's laws of gravitation. For example, if I take a bowling ball and a billiard ball and place them exactly still in space, they'll be attracted to each other, and after a few hours, they'll bump into each other. This is because Newton's law tells us the exact force between the two objects as long as we know their mass and how far apart they start from each other. But what about if I have three objects, like three billiard balls? Well, then the simple equation isn't so simple anymore, and it becomes much harder to predict exactly what will happen. It totally depends on exactly where they start. This is called the n-body problem. Even though we have the exact equations that will deterministically predict what will happen, we can't really predict what will happen. The reason is because the n-body problem is called chaotic. Chaotic systems are technically deterministic, meaning that you can predict exactly what will happen with any initial condition. So it comes down to choosing the initial conditions that you want to plug into your equation. For example, let's take a look at this equation that isn't chaotic. This is the equation that tells us how something moves. So you can see this equation is really predictable. You can see exactly what's going on at any time. You can see the displacement that happens. Even if you're a little bit off on your time measurement by a few decimal places, it doesn't really matter. You know your answer is going to be right in this range. At 15 seconds, I'm around 1,000 displacement. Even if my initial guess of the position and velocity were slightly off, I'd still end up with close to the same answer. So this equation isn't chaotic. 
But what about a different equation? This is called the Hanan map. It's an equation just like the other equation that I can type in in a program like Excel and then graph it. At some exact a, there's only one answer for x, so it is a real function, but you can see that it's hard to tell on this graph here at 1.1 what the exact value of x could be. Could you tell me if you look at this graph what x could be? It looks like it could be anywhere in this range. You don't really know what it's going to be. If you want to find what sum x is for a given a, then you have to be very specific with your a. For example, here's another graph of the Hanan map with even finer details. You can see that your x depends on the precision of your a. Let's say a was some measurement like distance. You can get a ruler and say something's like 12 inches long, but is it actually 12.00001 inches or 00002 inches? This will completely change what answer you get from your equation. The Hanan map is one of the best examples of a chaotic equation. And this is exactly why n-body systems are so difficult. They're so non-linear that you don't know what the real answer is because it's so dependent on your inputs. So what scientists do instead is, instead of running an n-body simulation just one time and seeing what the answer is, they run it thousands of times with slightly different inputs and tell you the likelihood that some event will occur. This is an important philosophical point. Even deterministic equations that have exact answers with no randomness in them can't give us exact answers because we can't provide exact inputs. There's no such thing as an exact temperature or time or distance or weight. Every measurement we take is taken out to some decimal point that we decide where to end it. So that means we still have to rely on probabilities to predict what will happen at some future point. So even if quantum mechanics didn't exist with its inherent randomness, we would still live in an unpredictable world. And thanks to Guardio for sponsoring this video and offering protection against phishing scams, leaks, and malicious websites. Visit guard.io slash action lab for a seven day trial and 20% off. Because of the difficulty of the end body system, there's active research and breakthroughs still happening. One of the most interesting fields of research right now is the study of gravitational choreographies. These are periodic orbits of any number of equal size masses. In 1993, it was discovered that there are orbits that could follow a figure eight. Later on, many more interesting orbits were found, like these. The solution to these orbits were based on the research of Gregory Minton. He has a really cool website where you can input some drawing of a choreography you want. And his code based on Newtonian gravity will draw a three body system that approximates that orbit. Because of this, many interesting choreographies have been found. You can even try it to see if you can discover some new choreography that hasn't been found yet. I've heard it said that we're close to the end of science because we've almost discovered how everything works and might be close to a theory of everything. But you can see from this one problem of just three or more masses orbiting each other that we have a long ways to go. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you next time.